Hey, hi everyone. Today we are going to see continuity of our CCNA class. The topic is basic function of the switch. So we are going to concentrate. Let me first bring my... Yeah. So we are going to see what are the basic function of the switches. Uh, Jitu, you can go on mute because this background so okay, okay. the thing is going to be captured. Okay, thank you. Uh, so, the function of switch, what we have basic function of switch? We have to concentrate on three point of the function. What basic fundamental function, three function we have in switching. So, you can see here first function is the basic function is address learning mac address learning so we will see today we're going to do the lab and we will understand the packet level of knowledge how the arc will going to build up and how reverse arc going to work both the lab we have separate lab for the reverse arc and the arc so let us understand what do you mean by arc ARP is nothing, it is going to, ARP is address resolution protocol. So, from your IP, from your IP it is going to resolve to MAC, it is very simple. ARP is going to resolve from MAC to IP, this is ARP, address resolution protocol. Reverse ARP is going to be reverse of this function, means from MAC, it's going to resolve to your IP. So we will do each and every lab and we will see how it's uh, the IP going to resolve MAC on the packet level, how the packet formation going to be happened and the same header what we're going to study now, you can see the same header level, this going to be changed and it's going to be forwarded or implemented into the ARF table okay next we have to see this number that's a hexadecimal number 08060800 0, 0, 0, 0, 0. during the lab we will see how this bit two two byte bit this type length and type this field going to use and going to show you this packet is belong to ARP or it's belong to some other header. So this header going to belong, this is frame, sorry, this is the frame and you going to see the header part of this frame, how this header going to tell about the things which is the action going to be happen, either this is for ARP, it's a reverse ARP or you going to do something else. So on looking on the frame header, you are able to decide means for what purpose the frame is going in to the switch. Now, this is one part. Second part, we have source MAC address. What is the role of source MAC address? Source MAC address is a role by the source MAC address. This is the, you can see the before source MAC address, you have destination MAC address. So source MAC address going to show you your MAC address, the frame originated from which system or which computer or laptop or any in device or any intermediate OS operating system. So this is the origin of you, origin of your system and this going to be installed in the MAC address table. MAC address table never going to deal with the destination. It's going to always install only the source MAC address because source never be false. Source always be designated with the particular in device. Okay, so, so we will see the lab is really it's capturing the source MAC or it's a destination MAC. Then next we have MAC address aging. By default MAC address they they're going to build the MAC table. In the MAC table, 
there is a limitation capacity according to their memory like 2960 model having different memory capacity and for other model like 45x series or nexus switches we have different capacity of switch and ram rom and other part so in that so there is a limitation of the memory due to that mac table having limitation they cannot secure unlimited mac so there is a aging after a certain time if there is no information received for that in that mac or no traffic available for the respective source mac it going to be age out what do you mean by age out it is going to be flush from the mac table so what is the aging time that is the 300 second means almost 500 sorry 5 minute almost 5 minute means it's going to keep you in idle if the mac address not receive any frame for 300 second this is the default timer value it going to be removed from the mac table okay now come to the filter and forwarding this is the we're going to discuss again this stuff while i'm going to do the lab so that you're going to remember this complete stuff and keep on doing labs so that no need to remember all these things so how are we going to see next information forwarding and filtering uh, these two information these two technique is the people they don't understand this what is different from the forwarding and filtering so we will do lab specific lab today only and we will see what do you mean by forwarding and how it's different from the filtering so forwarding let's understand i given the source mac address in address learning means when you build them your mac table you're going to build your mac table but what about destination address it's if you see the frame format this is the frame format so before going forwarding and filtering let's quickly discuss about the frame format what do you mean a frame format this is the frame we have total seven bit of preamble preamble is nothing this is going to give the information of synchronization of the beat it's going to give the information how your bit or byte going to be synchronized on the receiving part of the switch the switch which received this packet sorry this frame they will understand the rule of synchronization on the base of the preamble so preamble only we have seven bit one by sorry seven byte one byte we have a start of frame the startup frame says that your actual frame going to start after this byte. So we have source MAC address of 6 byte. We have destination MAC address of 6 byte. So in frame, if you see the first position for the source MAC address, the region that if someone going to ask frame where you want to, where you want to go, so he has to say, I'm going to XYZ destination. So always destination going to be first. Okay. And who are you after that? Where you are going? Who are you? Who are you? Nothing is the source address. That going to be registered in the MAC address table. Now we have next two byte of length or type. This type field says that what action you going to do. For what purpose this frame is there? First you get the destination says that where do you do, what you want to do. Second, who are you? Here, the third field says that what you going to do. So we are going to do the lab and we will understand how these three are, are huge if you understand the frame format. How they have their convey their role under the frame communication from one pc to another and this is the actual data the actual data which is going to be 
carried by this frame headers and last one is frame checksum this crc error it is going to check whether the data or any header i'm telling you header as well as data there is no error if it's an error it's going to drop and it's going to request for the same frame again so the crc checks going to confirm about your frame is corrected there is no error error free frame if it's an error it's going to be dropped it's going to request to next uh, same frame again till it's received the crc correction in that okay now come to the forwarding and filtering forwarding mainly work on destination mac address but the address learning we learn it's uh, use the source mac by the forwarding and filtering working only the destination mac address. how suppose you want to go x or y destination so you have to look into the your mac table if it is not available in mac table it's going to send each and every port except the port it's received so always remember the frame going to forward each and every port except it's received if it's mentioned into mac table then it going to do forwarding so forwarding they will decide which port associated with the mac we will do lab and it will be very clear right now we will do lab now filtering filtering says that suppose in a single port we are receiving the multiple mac on single port we register with the multiple mac if your source and destination belong to this list of mac then it's going to be filtered we're going to do the lab and we will create the scenario we will see the see the how this intelligent feature going to work in forwarding and filtration so filtration avoid major frame broadcast it's not going to broadcast okay and mac table of course mac table we going to see in each and every lab right now each and every um, section what we going to complete so we what we going to do in lab we will do the lab and we will understand what is the role of these two type two byte of this two digit and we try to remember for the interview purpose and we will see do the lab for arc we will do the lab for reverse arc we will see the um, destination mac registration how it's working for filtration as well as forwarding for loop avoidance switching having third function is a loop avoid loop avoiding for a spanning tree by default is running today we will do the lab and we will see what are the by default running on the cisco switch if something if you install the cisco switch by default what are the things it's going to be activated as soon as you going to switch on or you going to do the post of your switch so we have three function major first function address learning second function forwarding and filtration third function loop avoidance so we have entire lab and the courses multiple classes for a spanning tree in a separate today we will do the lab and we will see the default behavior of all three functions and we will see what are the property how we will identify this preambles and delimiters source mac destination mac as well as type to white of what is preamble again this is the just 0101 pattern and carrying the synchronization for the receiver so how to synchronize bit for the receiver so i'm going to take pause here for a second and if you have question till here let me know so that we can move to the lab and we will discuss each and every every this parameter again in the lab while we will have 
Any question till here? No, sir. Okay, thank you. So let's move and we will discuss this point in laugh. Uh, yes, Preeti, you want to say something? My query is like you told that there is no uh, Mac will flush out in five minutes if there is no request coming for that Mac, right? Yes, this it will happen. Yeah. Yes, pretty. Will it happen even though we have a state like the buffer is not reached? The Mac table buffer is not reached. Mac table buffer is not reached. Yes, this is not depend upon you. You have memory space in that. This is a completely aging technologies depend upon the model. If there is no frame received or any traffic, any kind of traffic, either R for any kind of traffic regarding those source MAC address, that MAC address is going to be plus from the Mac okay. Uh, so you can add the, this aging, you can modify the aging timer on and is a zero to uh, I think 10 lakhs second. If you want to engage in access, you can change it depend upon the model. Yes, next question. Uh, uh, I don't push. Okay, okay, go ahead. Is, is it in the new models as well? Yes, because generally they change the the aging timing. It's it's the it's uh, if suppose if the after that you can quickly learn those Mac address Mac table. Otherwise, your Mac table is going to be over over flooded. Okay. And the uh, the standard time will be changed as per the vendor or uh, is it's a standard one this is 300 second this is a default one you can change by yourself so we have advanced lab for that it's not covering ccna we are going to share you link for my advanced lab in the rack we will do and you can you can see that for different model you can change this aging time okay if in our Mac table, if we are able to see some of the Mac address or ARP entry is for like two years or three years. So it means that the device is continuously sending some requests. Yes, the, the, there is a management update for that source Mac. There is a management update for the source Mac. Otherwise, it is going to be age out. Because it's uh, logging continuously. Uh, if Yes, yes, the, you can do the lab. Suppose you, if you, you can, we will see the lab. We will, what we will do, we will decrease the aging time for the some particular Mac. And we will see after the 10 second, or if you, if you decrease the 10 second Macing, and um, as you are telling me, it means no one have flush the Mac. If the switches is, you can see the six year means there is a, no one reboot the, that switch. Suppose there is a power, power down activity, the, the Mac supposed to be flushed out, even a spinning tree going to be uh, flushed out your completely Mac if there is a topology change into your network. Yes, so ARP entry can be, say, ARP entry can be also you can plus. Okay. So we will do the lab and we will see, we will decrease our aging time and we will see after each time expire, the Mac address is going to flush or not. Even we have 10 or 20 Mac, there is no limitation of uh, Mac table. Okay guys? Yes. Thank okay, you. thank you. So let's move to our lab. So this is our basic fundamental lab. Today we will understand as soon as I'm going to touch my switch, so what going to be happened? What are the default thing? What supposed to be happened? And we will understand on the frame level, the frame moves from one PC to another PC. So let's um, jump to our packet tracer. we have opened the packet tracer you guys able to see my screen here yeah 
Okay, thank you. Who had Joan? On, uh, sorry. Okay. So I'm going to take most basic switch here. It let me out from the whiteboard. Okay. So I'm here now. So I'm going to select most basic switch 2960 model. Everyone familiar with this switch. I hope so. So here I'm going to switch on this. Uh, let me select three switches. I have selected three switches. One more switches. So we have switch one, zero, one, and two. These three switches. And I'm going to, I'm not going to do any configuration. I'm just going to connect the wire and i'm not going to do any configuration and we will check today we will understand as soon as we will connect the switch in the network what are the default behavior and later on we will discuss and modify that so let's start doing lab and we will add few pc and in order to complete our arp lab and reverse arp i have to add one dscp server so let's quickly complete our lab part, lab connecting network connecting part. So I'm taking PC, couple of PC. You can practice it like this in your home also. I will upload this. So I, I have taken five PC, five PC 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, and one server I'm going to select. Okay. This is for DSCP so that I should not assign, I'm not going to configure any IP in anywhere. It's going to be come from the server. So let's give the names is DSCP. This is DSCP server. Okay. And let's connect out each and every PC to our switches. This is very simple lab. Okay, I will select one more. Okay, we will connect it later on once we have requirement of that. So let's understand first part. Let me configure first thing the network part of the DSCP so that if my DSCP is working, I will go to DSCP services here. And this is the part I'm going to switch on the service in DSCP. This is the default pool. I'm, doing, I'm to going to configure the network gateway. This is the gateway. I'm going to select the very basic example 192.168.1.1. 1.0 slash 24 network. So this is my gateway. I'm assuming I'm going to configure my DNS as 192.168.1.12. So 11, 12, 13, 14 will be my servers, will be series of my server. And the pool, the DSCP going to assign the IP address to the system from this pool 192.168.1. I want the DSCP should assign the IP from 100. Okay. Before 100, the all the IP I'm going to keep reserved for the some other part. Okay. Did you guys? So now 255.255. .255 this is slash 24 and DSCP going to assign only 100 IP. It will start from 100. It will go to till 200. So only 100 IP going to be assigned. I'm going to give the EFTP also 1.12 I given for DNS. So I'm going to give for 13 as a PFTP. And I'm going to save this. See here. 
while you are doing lab this lab you supposed to understand here once we will save this these all parameter going to come here in the server pool let's i save it in this pool you supposed to make sure it's a coming there okay once done this dscp configuration part is done i assign the default gateway i assign the my network okay now let's start doing the lab so first lab i want to show you arp lab what do you mean by arp arp is going to call from ip to mac okay but there is no ip assigned to any system right now any ip assigned to any system no till now there is no ip you can open and you can check that see there is no ip assigned you go to running config ip config in the pc i can see there is no ip because we have not configured yet so but they have mac address but they have mac address so dscp work on reverse or dscp work on reverse or policy means that protocol called which is replace the reverse or technique that's boot p the protocol called boot p same the reverse art technology as a boot p so what what is the reverse of reverse of say they're going to give you mac to the ip right if you have mac they will assign you ip and rp if you have ip they will assign you mac means they will find you mac they will they will map with the map so let's see they don't have ip so how the switch having any entry on their mac table let's see. i'm on switch one okay before that let me configure the switches with the switch zero all the name otherwise all the switch look like switch so switch zero now we have switch one configure with the switch one and go to switch 3 configure with the switch two, sorry switch 2 save it now so come to the switch 0 cli again now the host name proper host name is there okay now let's check so mac table what is the command for checking the mac table mac table going to build you can see there is a only one mac entry in the switch there is no ip there is no request generated from the switch but the entry happened how it's happened as soon as this connected to and the switch the linkage of it will broadcast their mac and the entry going to be happened so if you have two switches connected two pc connected you have that many entry in the mac table okay now let's say any mac table entry this is due to reverse arf because they give their so mac address mac address table you can see the entry now what i'm going to do i'm going to request the pc1 dscp i'm going to request you can see there is no ip configure okay i'm going to request so how do you request go to ip configuration click dscp can you see the dscp click dscp and it's supposed to get ip from it's a failed it's a failed let's see what happened i'm going to check what happened to dscp services is on or off dscp services is on but the dscp service dscp itself don't have ip assigned yet so you have to manually configure that part so you go to here and give them ip manually so i will assign the ip 192.168.1.11 because 11 12 13 14 we reserve for the server 
so 11 for dscp like that we have 12 for dns 13 for tftp okay now we have seven eight marks and i'm going to assign the my gateway which is not right now configure just we are providing the ip and we have dns server 192.168.1.12 okay this thing going to be configured later on in the lab we will see in advanced lab once the lab going to be processed with the advanced configuration so today is basic just so we have given the ip of now to the dscp so let's check for that i can see the ip is okay now let's ping yourself ping yourself 192.168.1.11 i'm pinging myself i'm retrieval myself okay now after that i'm going to move to now we have ip to dscp let's try now same way for dscp this time we are receiving or not so requesting now dscp request successful and you can see your ip this is wrong ip we received we again we will try this is the packet tracer issue don't worry again i supposed to receive the ip from the 100 so yeah, we right. have to reset means dscp not working what That's happened with dscp so always you do your lab back keep on checking your services is on you given the ip from 100 what happened let's switch off switch on again okay and then you try this so i'm going to try again for dscp we will go for this and we will try for it. It's receiving to the wrong man. Why? One more two, it is okay, right, Ashikosh? It's not true because I have configured this Never, is uh, where start IP address is 192.168. This. So let me save it again. Okay, twice. Add okay already added save so it's supposed to be um this server supposed to be happen maximum user okay switch off switch on because the range i given from 100 is supposed to receive from 100 only or you can change 50 so i i supposed to receive from 50 range do you understand uh you meant to say uh you have given uh, start ip address is 150 right yes so, uh, now so i have changed the ip 192 or under 50 from 50 is supposed to start 50 means uh one 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 two it's okay right no it's a start from 50 51 okay. 52 51, 53, 53 okay, okay. and okay. higher it will is supposed to go because the gateway ip is 1.1 1 .1 and the server ip i deserved this is the range the ip start range okay now again let's try this okay otherwise i will reboot the packet tracer sometime it's not working proper try to understand now you yeah, you can see working. Yeah. now it's working maybe it's a work it's not if it's not working you are not able to debug the packet level of um uh, you you cannot able to see right packet coming from that now my dscp is working as as per my expectation so let's see what ip i received here okay so suppose even though it's not working what you will do you will save your lab and you going to restart your lab because sometimes it's a hang okay clear but the concept never be changed concept must be same so we received the ip this everything we received gateway and let's ping to let's ping to this i'm able to ping 190.168.1. .1 any ip like 
my server IP, I am able to ping. Now I want to show you what going to happen if we did not ping, suppose I am not going to ping this PC. Now come to the, we will start ARP lab. We have no IP, you can see there is no IP configure here. Okay, so there is no ARP resolution, right guys, because the ARP is from IP to MAC. So let's see this MAC is coming entry here or not. You see there is a MAC entry table. All the four are having MAC entry. How the MAC entry happened? Uh, this is this stupid. This is the reverse ARP. Oh. This is reverse ARP. Suppose as soon as DSCP active in that and you going to request for any IP. So your ARP entry not going to build. I'm going to show you. Let's do this. I'm going to go for DSCP. I will receive the DSCP 51. Next IP I received 1.51. Do we have ARP entry? Let's check it out. So I'm going to do IP config. I received the IP, but when I'm going to do ARP minus A, let me see entry, entry, ARP entry say, no, there is no ARP. Then how do you receive IP? By which mechanism you receive IP? Reverse that is ARP. called reverse ARP. How do you justify? You go to switch and you can see your Mac is there. Your PC Mac is there. This Mac. Like 463E. You see 463E. 463E. Can you see? Yes. Okay. Now, Astos, I want ARP entry. For ARP entry, what you have to do? You have to resolve your IP into Mac. Right? For that you have to assign IP address. You have to ping IP address. No, it is already assigned. Assign you have to ping IP address. IP address. Now let's uh, I'm going to do any any kind of ping. I'm going to ping any IP. Ping. Let me ping to my 168.1.50 came to already assign someone else. So let's ping that. It's so reachable. Let's ping one more, 11. Now we will check the ARP entry. Now I can see there is an ARP entry. So ARP entry is IP to MAC. Let's show that. Okay. So till now we have not IP. We don't have IP. How do I receive IP? That's a good P protocol, which is somewhere reverse our tech use because they have my mac they don't have my ip so let's understand the on the packet level how it's going to happen how it's happening so i'm going to do i'm going to um i'm going to receive they, they don't have any ip right now right and i check on the pc2 now i'm working on pc2 because PT, pc2 don't have any ip so I will generate the um, ARP. I will try to ping and we will see how the ARP table going to build on each and every packet. And we will see what are the parameter going to change in frame. If I'm going to ping, what is the parameter? If the ARP going to generate, what is the parameter in the frame level? Okay, let's do this. So I'm going to switch on the simulator where we're going to study our the packet level knowledge and let's trigger ping let's trigger the ping so i'm going to know not from this it's already there i'm going to use this where there is no there is no ip so let's assign the boot p uh, no, we will not do this lab. 
or let me get them we will do the lab for ARP not for DSCP let's first get the IP so I got the IP 1.52 now now I'm going to see the IP and do the packet label once I will start pinging we will debug on packet okay so packet label will be that I'm going to ping 50 and I will start my simulator I started my simulator and this will be I'm going to ping so what going to happen here let's understand the ping packet started from here it came to this switch and it's given to no this is not a ping packet this is a ARP packet if you see because they don't have ARP can you see there is a ARP packet so this ARP packet broadcasted to each and every PC now it's going to receive the ARP packet ARP reply from PC 0 and is coming to as a unicast reply to this we will study the packet level let's complete at least one now once it's received the ARP now it's going to generate the ICMP packet can you see black one is ICMP black one is ICMP packet if you see my cursor black one is ICMP now ICMP coming here and reaching to one so let's see uh, how many how many ping reply is received now ping packet received to the PC 0 now back to reply coming back to switch 0 now followed by the switch 1 and then switch 2 and it's going to reach to this so I'm going to stop here and we're going to debug what happened each and every packet okay so I can see the first they able to ping first packet one packet it's already pinged let's study how what happened to this i'm going to stop here let's pause sometime and study what happened so as soon as you can see here i'm coming to pc2 first you can see the packet on the this is the we have started pc2 yes so you can see arc table here what happened it's uh, sending the arc table is asking I have source is 52 and the destination is this is Ethernet destination this my source MAC address is this I don't know the what is the source destination MAC address so he given and the packet is a ARP can you see packet ARP type now let's go for PDU type if you I will go for header so header says that preamble 101010 they are telling destination is broadcast source is my Mac the type what are you going to do so destination where you want to go I want to go everywhere and ask everyone what is the what is the the value of that IP what is the Mac of that IP who is the source I am the source what you want to do 0806 type I have already explained you this means that 0806 when you will divert and you will see means this packet belong to ARP they are not actual ping so 0806 says that about the ARP this packet belong to ARP here guys here till should i move yes sir okay now go to next level i'm going to switch zero what happened on switch zero this is a spinning tree packet so i'm not going to uh, run behind the spinning tree i want to see what icmp packet initiated from pc2 is staying my source ip is this destination ip is this type 8 what do you mean by type 8 type 8 says 0800 whenever you will see frame type 8 means it belong to ICMP so let's see the 
packet level so you can see your packet level your packet icmp so you don't have you don't have any frame generated why because they don't know the destination they they generate the arp that's why they didn't they are not generated any layer to communication so this packet not even coming out to the pc they stop they hold this packet you can see that there is no layer to formation there is a scmp but it's generate the arp and asking first let me get the arp resolution okay now once it the arp went so let's i want to see the arp reply switch to if you see switch to reply with the pc2 with the source is this destination is this source map and the, you can see all the arp going to broadcasting every interface if you see it's received on this interface it's forwarded or it's a broadcasted all the interface this is called forwarding this is called forwarding because they don't have entry because they don't have it now if you go to next again you can see switch zero let's go to switch zero i want to see what happened on switch zero switch zero it's again it's a forwarding it's a receiving on zero 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 one port and forwarding to zero two port and zero three port so this is called forwarding mechanism on the basis of the mac table but we he did not receive the eight now come to the i'm going to come on pc0 because pc0 actual they have arf entry now what happened you can see here i have arp reply how do you know astos how do you know he has arp reply you can see he is not following he has f f f f f as a but he has replied can you see the mac this is the mac he is replying that i have mac so i am going to reply this mac this this r packet i am the responsible to reply this r packet if you see inbound inbound having 0806 and outbound having 0806 means he is the responsing inbound if you see the fff outbound if you see there is a proper mac address sorry source has a proper mac address because replying with the their own mac clear guys the pc0 yes. having that mac and once if you see that if you see again i'm coming to switch to switch to packet and switch to packet you can see there is no fff even the arp even though this packet belong to arp you see this packet belong to arp but the source and destination having there is no fff means they have successfully resolved the ip into ah. okay now come to the last pc on this pc where he received what he received wow it's received with the you can just put uh... the mac address now once he received the mac address it will jump to the icm earlier if you so i already show you there is no out layer that time they keep hold the icmp but now they release because they have arp table entry once they have arp table entry they have source mac destination mac they have forwarding mechanism so it jump to the switch 2 you can see here jump to switch and switch to forwarding this you can see that it's a forwarding from port 02 to port 01 means the packet coming port 02 going to 0 i'm going to stop this simulation let the complete the packet uh, capturing um all the ping supposed to be happened so you can see all the four packet pinged so you understand the packet level what do you mean by 0806 i'm going to stop recording here
okay yeah. and i will see you in next class with the next topic okay and the next topic like um, uh, we will see the forwarding and filtration let me stop this here